One of the biggest things to really catch any different species of fish is actually just figuring out what they're feeding on. And when you look at this open water musky fishing, you know, we, we caught one fish casting early on, but as Josh will give us a little bit more details on, generally you wouldn't start out that way. You'd start out doing what we're doing here, trolling. And, right. the, and you give us a little bit of insight why that would be. Right. So. I spoke earlier on that fish. We, we, were, we were cheating a little bit. We, we have a little previous knowledge because I'm out here every day, right? So, but when it all started for me learning this bite, it, 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 on, on almost any lake, it's gonna start with trolling because it's just a, a very efficient way to cover a lot of water and look on your electronics for those hard to soft bottom transitions that we were talking about. Um, also looking for baits um, and if you get bits, that's, I mean, obviously you just caught one trolling and it's easy to duplicate that, but um, you could also argue it might not be a bad idea, depending on the depth that you caught the fish at, to drop the trolling motor down right there and make some casts right in that area, because a lot of times there's more than one fish um, in the same general area out here when this bite is on. But trolling is like a good starting point to kind of window shop the spots that you might want to cast later. Um, find, you know, find the area where there's the most bait, find those transitions, which a lot of times those two things go hand in hand. But what about the, uh, the timing of this? Right now it's like what, musky season opened up, what, two weeks ago? Or is it three weeks ago? Yeah, two and a half weeks ago. Two and a half weeks ago, and realistically, the section of the lake we're in, a lot of the fish spawned in these areas, up on these big shallow fat flats. We got a bunch of some creeks that come in and we got big shallow weed beds. Those fish spawned out up in those shallow bays and what do they do? Shortly after spawning, they come up and they turn around and they swim straight out to sea. And a lot of times these fish are really high over open water and they're targeting what is the largest, uh, really, really primary forage for these fish, which are tulabies and whitefish in this particular lake. And as you were saying, this exact pattern is going on in a lot of different lakes in Minnesota to right now. The majority of the lakes, yeah. probably. In uh, particular, you're talking some of the largest fish. For trolling, crankbaits are king big, small, and in between. For years, smaller lures were the primary baits used for the early season open water trolling game. Recently, magnum crankbaits like matlocks, headlocks, and pelagics are the rage among hardcore musky commandos. All of these baits have a wide wandering action at trolling speeds from two to five miles an hour. Today we're fishing with St. Croix's nine foot heavy power Bojo trolling rods. Reels, size 47 Daiwa Sea Line line counter, spooled with 80 pound test Suffolk's performance braid. The Sea Line is Daiwa's classic trolling reel, but following the shoot, we got our hands on the new Lexa line counters. This is a low profile line counting reel that serves two purposes. You can cast it or troll with it. You get a lot of bang for your buck. There we go. Whoa. Wow, that thing just crushed it, man. Wow. Oh, it's a big... I think it's a musky. It's not a huge one, but yeah, musky. Sweet. Cool, there you go, buddy. Okay, yeah. Hey, we're on the board. Huh? Check that out. Sweet. You have to have the right gear to pull big baits and boards. The boards we are running are Offshore Tackle's SST Pro Mags, which are designed for heavy bait trolling applications. Some of you may be wondering, what lures do you want to cast in zombie land? Most of the fish are really quite shallow, so surface lures, soft baits, bucktails, gliders, crankbaits will all work when the fish are feeding. We are using this process to kind of dial things in here. Even though we didn't get a bite trolling, the trolling was really beneficial to the game plan today because we, we were able to locate some of the hard to soft bottom transitions, put waypoints on them, along with find, there are just some areas out here where there's a lot of bait and other areas that seem pretty quiet and, and, and pretty void of bait fish right now. So now we got the trolling motor in the water and we are kind of weaving back and forth through the areas that we identified when we were trolling and using our GPS to kind of show us where we've been to create a breadcrumb trail and mow the lawn weaving back and forth so that we're covering every inch of the water. 
where these transition areas and where the bait fish are. And guess what? We're finding muskies in those areas. Two more. See them? Yeah, I, I, oh, I'm yeah. pretty sure right those here. are skis right, right here. That's what those are. So, um, we'll, we'll actually put a mark on that. <laughs> as, uh, look at that. You see, oh, look at that there. There are a number of them right out here. This is actually the weird thing is we've actually looped back around. This is relatively close where you caught that first fish. Yeah. You know, you initially think about what we're trying to do here. We're trying to catch fish that are suspended high in the water column over a relatively deep basin. In this particular basin right now, we're in 44 feet of water. What we're trying to do is use the map as more or less like we're cutting, mowing the lawn. And you can see my track lines and I'm staying about a cast and a half, two casts apart. And where you get into an area and you can see these coordinates. We actually saw a fish here yesterday and we just caught another fish from that same area. So we came back into this area. Usually these fish are not alone. Usually there's a couple of them in a given spot, but we're actually sort of methodically using the map for our positioning because there's no really structural edge that we're really particularly uh, fishing against. Yeah, I mean, it's right near that co coordinate again where we just saw a muskie. Right. Got him. Good one, James? Yeah. I am ready. I am ready. There you go. Where you want me? Oh, on this side here. Okay. He's hooked good. Okay. There we go. Whoa, whoa, there we go. Come here, buddy. Oh, he ate it. Come he here, buddy. Get him in there. Whoa. Ah. <laughs> okay. Whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> there, <go>. there we go. <laughs> All right. Mr. Shadzilla. Come here. Okay, there. There we go. You ready? Okay, we're gonna lift her. There we go. Get her back into the water. Beautiful fish. Look at that. We'll have to get her back pretty quickly. Come here, buddy. Ooh, you ready to go? A slow roll. Over the course of this two-day trip to Lake Vermilion, we boated two fish both casting. We had four follows, no fish trolling. Two days after our trip, Josh was out guiding and had a stellar low light trolling bite with three fish, a 56, a 55, and a 54. Now that's incredible muskie fishing. Today, some guides focus all their early season muskie efforts in open water. The interesting part of this story, the same suspended bite goes on in a lot of lakes all across the North Country and few, if any, people target them. Food is simply the name of the game when it comes to catching big fish.